Salutations, everyone. Welcome back to another Total Warhammer 3 guide. I'm Lord Horn, and today we're going to be going over 10 tips on how to play Norska better. Tip 1. The Norska economy is not the best in the game. Um, if you're used to a standard nation like the Empire, the Dwarves, or the High Elves, for example, uh, you're going to have to get used to a playstyle that uses plenty of raiding, sacking, and raising to make money. Um, Norska struggles to have a large income, um, but thankfully not all your armies are super expensive. But get used to raiding, sacking, and raising to fund your army and buy upgrades in your settlements, because otherwise you probably won't have money to do it. Tip 2. Norska is probably one of the worst defensive factions in the game, candidate for the worst, mainly because even their capital settlements lack walls so long as they're in the Norskin homelands, which means you don't want to be invaded. Um, you want to try and prevent the enemies invading you at all, so you want to be invading them rather than on the defensive. Uh, your garrisons are not terrible, but without walls, you really struggle to stop invading armies. So don't rely on defense. In fact, you may not even want to build garrison buildings, build military ones, and try and attack as much as possible. Tip three, and this is a uh, one most people know, but it bears repeating. When a Norska faction defeats another Nat Norska faction leader in battle, you have the option to confederate. You'll get a pop-up that's basically called Warlord Defeated. And you can choose to confederate with that faction. You get to keep the leader of it. You can also kill them or other stuff as well. But it's usually worth confederating. Norska has the ability to rapidly grow to the largest faction in the game at the start. Um, one note, if you're playing, obviously, the two legendary lords, is yes, it does work on the other legendary lord faction. Um, so as Wolfric, you want to try and take out Throg and vice versa. If you do, you get all their lands, um, which is great. Norska really does require booming early on, so you want to be confederated as fast as possible. Very rarely do you not want to confederate a faction. Tip 4. Norska has the ability to dedicate themselves to one of the... They're kind of like the Chaos Gods, but they're not the Chaos Gods in the traditional sense. In fact, they're called like the Hound, the Eagle... The crow or the serpent they have different advantages in dedicating to them but you want to pick which one you're going to go for from the start of the game and basically focus on it so if for example you want insane casualty replenishment focus on the crow if you want more magic you can focus on the serpent if you want more combat ability army experience and weapon strength focus on the hound uh, I will note that the Eagle one is really nice if you're going to go Magic, but otherwise you probably are going to want to go for the Hound out of the other options. In my experience, that's the strongest one, but it's entirely up to you which one you go for. But pick one and stick to it, trying to... You can only... Just go for one. Make sure you know at the beginning of the game what you're going for, because every time you sack or raise, you get to make that choice. Kind of like the Demons of Chaos, but worse tip five norska units are extremely hard hitting um you most of them have armor penetration or rather good damage dealing ability but they are weak to magic and they are weak to range so definitely consider taking uh shielded units if you're going to fight range in terms of magic the best thing you can do is not really get hit by it meaning either charge into combat so they hit their own units or use your surprisingly strong line of mages yourself. You've got fire, shadow, uh, metal, and death to counteract them. Or use your cav units to flank them. But by and large, you're weak to range and magic, so just be aware of that. In terms of melee combat, there's very few factions that are stronger to you, uh, stronger than you in melee combat. So just be aware um, that while your units hit hard, they can get wiped out really quickly from range and magic spells. Tip 6. Going along with the very hard hitting of the previous tips, the strength of Norska lies in its heroes, its melee units, and its monster roster. While it does have some cab units and some ranged units, you by and large want to avoid them. Special um, mention here for these Marauder Javelins though, which early game can absolutely wreck people but fall off later on. 
Um, cav units never really get that amazing, but they do have these throwing axes. So if you do want to do a little skirmishing, it's worth it. But by and large, focus yourself into their very solid melee line. It's not the deepest in terms of units, but it provides what you need. These guys are amazing in melee defense, and these guys are amazing at armor piercing. But it's truly monsters and heroes where Norska shines. Their lords are all very powerful. Their heroes, specifically the Wolfskin, Weirkin, are amazingly fast, powerful, hard hitters. You can kind of substitute for the weak Cav. But these monsters are amazingly strong. You have to, to unlock them, you have to go on monster hunts. Um, so just be aware of that. But they really do make up for the holes in your roster. And to play at a high level or even late game, you really need access to these monster units as soon as you can. Don't rush it though. Um, your base roster is really strong. Just not in range and cap. Tip seven, and this is something of an economy one. You wanna get provinces with ports over inland ones. And I'll just show you why right now. If you build your base economic building here, it generates 50 gold all the way up. It's 150 gold. The base level of ports by comparison is 200 gold growth and casualty replenishment all the way up 800 gold from a port province. It's amazing. Um, they in fact had to nerf it when they were developing the game. Plus, if you're fully dedicated to one of the various gods, you get an additional 60 income from that. Basically, if you want to have a solid economy, go for ports. Also, the ports will help you grow your other your base growth building otherwise only gets to 30, which isn't that great. Think, think you're the Vikings, which is basically what they're based off of. You raid your pillage coastlines. You don't tend to occupy inland unless you're going to wipe out a faction. So coastal provinces and ports, you want as many ports as you can get. The inland provinces are not as valuable to you. So those should be where you put your unit construction inland. Your ports are more for money and growth and stuff. Tip eight, some of your buildings have faction-wide boosts. Nothing on the level of Bretonia's boost, but you do have some that matter. If you build up their smithy line, you will get additional global recruitment, which is always nice. And if you build up the worship temple, you can, like many other factions, get Lord recruitment rank up. However, yours is faction wide, which means if you've got 20 provinces and you build this everywhere, you can have immortal lords being recruited from the from your pool. Uh, since Norska relies so heavily on its lords and heroes, um, sadly there's no easy way to boost lords, but uh, sorry, heroes, but you can boost lords. Um, it's really worth going for it. However, it does require level 5 settlements, so you're not going to get too many of them early game, but do remember it for late game. It makes a world of difference. Tip 9. Monster hunting is good, and it's required for late game, but not at the expense of enemies invading you. So, in order to do monster hunting, you have to research the attack, and then you will be allowed to go to specific battles and other stuff that can unlock more units. It's good, and yes, you want to go monster hunting. However, you cannot neglect your offense. Norska suffers so badly at defense. If someone's invading you, you need to have an army there to repel it. So, in my my several playthroughs of this faction, the best time I found to go monster hunting was if it was a quick, easy level one hunt, I could do it immediately. But once you got to the later ones, you have to build like a custom strong army for it. You really need two armies. One to defend and go on offense. Hopefully, you can limit the amount of wars and people invading you. Bretonia is a particular threat, I find, as is Kislev. Um, so having an army to be able to deal with them, even if it's just ambushing defense, is makes monster hunting way safer. P some people um, will devote heavily to monster hunting early on, and they'll either lose units or be damaged, or they won't focus on the offense, and they will get better units, yes, but they will be being invaded, losing lands, and their economy will suffer. So don't rush into monster hunting. Go to it when it's natural and safe, but focus on keeping enemies from invading you. And the final tip, tip 10, be aggressive in both battles and campaigns. Um, your mechanics rely heavily on being in the fight, and in battles you have no powerful range and you have no artillery to handle it. If you get an alliance with another faction, yes, you can round out some of your roster holes, but it still doesn't solve the fundamental issue of your faction, which is 
They're basically insane berserkers who charge into battle. I really hope the game gets changed in the future to add some more depth to this faction. But in the meantime, even if your army runs out and dies and you lose the army, that's fine. Ideally, you don't lose any great armies and you save your heroes at least. Wolfric is notorious for coming back every couple turns uh, and coming again. So in some ways, losing a full army as Norska is not a problem. Um, especially if you can rebuild it and get raiding again. And usually you can have some insane um, recruitment rates. So don't worry too much about losing an army, but definitely be aggressive. You want to get to these higher level allegiance to the gods as quick as possible. The bonuses are really worth hitting. And um, that's about it. It's not the deepest faction. Um, it has its place. Honestly, not a lot of people play this one, but I felt I should do it anyway. Because if you like Vikings, this is your faction. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped. If you have some more tips and stuff, I'd love for you to stick them below. Um, I'm not the best at this one, so this is just the tips I can give that improve people's gameplay, not mastery tips. And thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, all that great stuff. And I'll see you guys in another guide or let's play. Bye for now.